Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to Bee and K Bees. I'm sure you've heard of nurse bees, but understanding the role that nurse bees play in the development of a colony and how to utilize the things that they're good at and the things that they're not so good at as beekeepers is a super important tool, and that's what we're going to talk about today on the channel. So what is a nurse bee? Well, I'm sure you understand that a uh, honeybee colony is divided into a caste system, which contains workers and drones and a queen. Usually one queen, but sometimes there's more than one. But in talking about worker bees, there's a caste system in that as well that is based on age. So as a bee develops throughout its life, it's going to go through a series of different jobs and have a unique biological ability to take care of those jobs. The first couple of days of a bee's life, she's still developing. She's hardening, her hypopharyngeal glands are still developing, and she'll spend those couple of days just getting stronger and cleaning cells. But after those first couple of days, she will turn into what's called a nurse bee. And that is what we're talking about today on the channel, but it's extremely important for the development of a honeybee colony. When her hypopharyngeal gland develops, this allows for her to intake pollen and output brood food or royal jelly. Now, all bees can do this given the right circumstances, but nurse bees of that proper age, between about three days old and 13 days old, have the absolute best ability to produce the most nutritious brood food that is possible inside of a honeybee colony. Not only do they have this unique ability to create this brood food, but they also have a unique ability to assess brood, figure out what it is exactly that they're looking at, whether it's a drone, a queen, or a worker, and then also figure out what's going on in terms of how old this larva is and how much food it has and therefore how much it needs. So the best bees to feed these developing larvae are these young nurse bees. And I mean, they're very important. A larva will be fed or be visited by a nurse bee up to 1,300 times per day and about 10,000 times during the total larval development. So that's a ton of attention that these larvae need to develop properly. And there's nobody better to take care of them than these 3 to 13 day old nurse bees. After that 10 or so day period of feeding these young larvae, these nurse bees will graduate to feeding older larvae, and then they'll start feeding and taking care of queens, and then they'll start creating wax. So they don't do all of these things simultaneously, and while they're in this portion of their life, as I said earlier, they are especially adapted to do the job that they're doing. Right around the time, maybe the midpoint or the latter portion of a bee's wax secretion portion of her life, she's going to start paying more attention to what's going on at the entrances, starting to do guard duty and get ready for orientation flights. At this time, her hypopharyngeal gland has developed beyond the ability to create good brood food, and that's okay because her job has been replaced by younger bees. She's about to go out on an orientation flight or a series of orientation flights where she will fly concentric circles around her hive, familiarizing herself with the area so that when she graduates to becoming a forager, she'll know exactly how to get back to the house when she's out grabbing groceries. In the odd situation where a colony is low on nurse bees but has a bunch of other aged bees, these other aged bees will take over nurse bee duty. It's obviously an evolutionary advantage to have the ability to do whatever it is that needs to be done, but that does not mean that it's being done optimally. So these bees, these older forager bees in this weird situation where they're having to feed young larvae will absolutely do it, but the brood food that they will create will be less nutritious and they will give less of it. So after they graduate past that 3 to 13 day old period of being nurse bee, their ability to take care of young larvae is greatly, greatly depleted. Okay, so we understand that nurse bees are incredibly important to the development of a colony, but how do we use that importance and their advantages and disadvantages to our advantage as beekeepers? Well, the first one, the one that's most commonly talked about and is uh, just an essential part of being able to create splits is utilizing the ability or the disability, the inability, I guess is the correct word, that these bees have of flying from hive to hive. They've not done orientation flights. They don't know anything about the interhive politics. 
So when you take a frame from one hive and put it into a box a few feet away, the foragers are going to get up, realize that they're not at home, and go back to their original location, whereas the nurse bees are going to stay where you put them doing what it is you want them to do, taking care of the brood that is on the frames that they're on. So understanding that, understanding how to separate the nurse bees out and how to make sure that you have enough nurse bees in these splits that you're setting out is of maximum importance. Now, obviously, you want these nurse bees in these splits for a bunch of different reasons. You want them to take care of the brood that is in there. You want them to be able to feed the brood amply so that when young bees emerge, they can take care of the resulting brood from that new queen. Uh, you want them to be able to keep everything nice and warm to make sure that you avoid chilled brood, which can create European fowl brood bacteria nastiness. So setting out splits uh, and understanding what nurse bees are and how to make sure that they're in that colony, um, I mean, it's just the importance cannot be overstated. In addition to the nurse bees being advantageous for making splits, they're also advantageous for mite counts. Because of the fact that they are confined to the brood area, they are confined to the highest mite density part of the hive. So when you're going through a colony to do a mite wash, you really do want to grab a brood frame that's full of largely nurse bees because you're killing bees to figure out how many mites are in there. So you really want to make sure that you're going to get the most accurate count you can and nurse bees are going to give you that. And lastly, in terms of nurse bees being an advantage to beekeepers, I have to mention their willingness and ability to create queens, to take care of developing queens and to take care of live queens. So when you're creating a cell builder, you really just want it full of nurse bees. You want it full of brood food producing nurse bees, wax aged nurse bees. You really just want a, a hive that is absolutely packed with these young bees, as many of them as you can, as much of a percentage of that overall hive numbers as you can. And if you're creating a queen bank, that's another situation where you really do want to make sure that it's full of nurse bees because they're going to see these queens and just see a job that needs to be done, a bee that needs to be taken care of, as opposed to seeing a bee that is not their queen that they want to attack and kill. So yeah, when these nurse bees see a developing queen or see the need for a queen or see a queen in need, they just go right to the task. They don't wonder if it's their queen. They don't wonder if it was their queen that laid the egg. They just do what it is that you really want them to do. So it's great to know that they are an advantage, but it's a different thing to understand how to use them to our advantage. And in doing that, we have to understand how to separate foragers from nurse bees. I already briefly mentioned it when I talked about setting out a split and having the foragers return home, and that is essentially it. I mean, you really want to give the foragers the opportunity to realize that where they're at is not their home to pick up and, and go home. You're going to be left in this split or this frame that you set aside with only nurse bees. Now, another method, if you're trying to take nurse bees from one colony and put them into another, or you're trying to create a cell builder that's just chock full of nurse bees, is to grab a brood frame and just shake the bees off. Almost immediately, there will be bees that get up and take off. Those are the foragers that you don't want in whatever it is you're doing. And the bees that stay there are nurse bees. You can utilize that method for mite counts as well. The way I do it is I turn over a telescoping cover, shake a brood frame onto the inside of the telescoping cover. The foragers will get up and take off. The nurse bees will be left there on the cover. Smash them all down into a corner, pick them up with a little jar or a scooper, and you're good. You've got 300 nurse bees. Tips for utilizing nurse bees for splitting. Um, you should probably be able to deduce uh, the majority of them already just based on what we've said about the things that they're good at and the way that we can utilize them to our advantage. But there are a couple of tips that are not so intuitive and we're going to go over those right now. When you set out a split, especially if you're setting it out in the same yard or the split will be in the same yard for any appreciable amount of time, anything more than five or 10 minutes, you really do want to check the level of workers in that box a couple of hours after you set it out. Even if you're taking frames directly from the brood area of the parent colony, there can be a lot of foragers on those frames, and it can be a very bad surprise to come to realize when you go out the next day 
and see that your new splits had been left almost bee-less overnight. That is a great way to have a bunch of chilled brood and a bunch of problems that will persist well throughout the year. Um, so it's really, truly advantageous to make sure a couple hours after you set out your frames uh, that they have enough. Now, my general rule is if I'm setting out a queenless split that is going to have any ability for foragers to go back, I have a shake of nurse bees for every single frame I put in there. So I'll put a frame of bees and brood into the colony, as well as an extra shake of bees for each frame. Regardless of how you go about it, whether you shake a frame for each frame that you give them, or you're just checking a couple of hours later, it really can't hurt if you err on the side of too much in terms of bees for especially your queenless splits. Because once again, that return of foragers can be devastating, especially if you're loading them up with a bunch of frames of brood. It can just completely deplete their ability to keep that brood warm and that split is not going to develop the way you want them to. And lastly, in terms of tips for splitting, are when you're setting out queenless nukes or you're moving splits to a new location in any situation where a lot of the foragers are going to return to the parent hive you have to feed that nuke you have to feed it or make sure that they have food inside the colony and by food inside the colony i don't mean capped honey capped honey is more of an emergency food for bees and they don't like to uncap honey to feed larvae so you really want to make sure that they either have ample open nectar or that you're actually putting sugar on the inside of the hive. And by sugar, I mean syrup, not dry sugar. So you, you very much want to make sure that they have open syrup or nectar inside the colony so that they can feed these larvae as they're being created because these are not forager bees that are going to go out and get groceries every day the way the parent hive was. So be mindful of the fact that number one, these foragers are going to return, depleting the split of population that is necessary to create a brood nest and keep the brood nest warm, but also depleting that split of their ability to go out and get food. So it's on you as a beekeeper to make sure that they have it inside the colony constantly while they're developing. All right, that's it. That's what I have on nurse bees. I think that it's an incredibly important lesson to learn. It can uh, be very, very difficult to learn it by mistake. And I've done it, um, I remember, what, this is probably seven or eight years ago, setting out a yard full of mating nukes and um, just not having enough bees in any of them. And each one had frames of brood. And we had, that was our first ever bout of European fowl brood that I battled throughout the entire year that year because I was not mindful of making sure that I had enough nurse bees in these little splits. And once again, I mean, in Michigan, it is super advantageous because usually the time that we're setting splits out is the time that the weather is very erratic. So Always err on too much. Uh, it can never hurt to have a little bit extra nurse bees in a colony. You're just going to have even more well-fed larvae as your queen is building this brood nest. And when they get to the age of foragers, you're going to have a robust colony that's doing a lot of good work. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I appreciate the heck out of that. If you want to see more as they come out in the future, and there will be tons more uh, very soon and throughout the rest of the bee year, click subscribe. I'd appreciate that too. But if you really want to help, you can go to patreon.com slash bkbs. There's a $5 tier. There's a $25 tier. Anything you guys can do, I'm very appreciative of. Once again, I'm just appreciative of you being here. Thanks for watching. Get out there and have some fun with your bees. See ya.